guys welcome back to my youtube channel my name is sheila in today's video we are going to be learning how to make um the statement sleeved uh cropped cardigan uh it's very simple to make if you follow along with me closely and i'm glad to really share with you this pattern because it was quite challenging for me but i figured it out so i hope you guys also figure it out it has very um nice tricks for crochet especially that you can apply to different projects so uh, let's get into the video for this project you'll need any chunky yarn and i'll be using the brand seal it's a three ply chunky and it's a hundred percent acrylic so um this is what i'll be using in this color brown and uh a 6.5 millimeter crochet hook so let's get started we're going to start off with the back side of our sweater this uh, project will be worked in parts so there's the back side there's the front panels and then there are the sleeves and then winding up so let's get started I'm going to start off with a chain of 10 and this will apply to every sweater so whatever size you're making you're going to start off with a chain of 10 and this is going to be for the ribbing part of the sweater at the bottom so one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten and after your ten chains you're going to go into the second chain from the hook and make a single crochet and continue to make one single crochet in each and every chain so right now we are working the back panel so you should be having a total of nine single crochets at the end of um, of the row should be having a total of nine single crochets and after this you're going to chain up one and we are going to row two turn your work and we are going to be working in the back loop only you can see a stitch has this and this we are only going to go into the back loop of each and every stitch only the back loop in order to create the ribbing effect so continue to go into the back loop And now we're coming to the end and this is our very last stitch you go into the back loop and make a single crochet so this is how it should look like you can see this ribbing and now you're going to chain up one and we are going to repeat row two until we get a length that is uh, able to stretch to half our hip measurement since we are working in parts we are going to be working the back side alone and then the front sides alone so we are going to be going into the back loop only for a total number of rows um, whereby um, the length is half our hip measurement when stretched not over stretched but a bit stretched so you can see this ribbed effect I'm going to just be demonstrating this for you um, I'm going to be doing some more rows so that we can get the exact feel of what I want and then I'll actually introduce the actual sweater so let me go ahead and make a total of around 10 rows and then I'll get back to you when I have that so here are the 10 rows that i was talking about and since we are just demonstrating a small sample of what you should be doing on the large sweater i'm using a sample of 10 rows but for the actual sweater i actually went ahead to do a total of 40 40 rows so uh after this you're going to chain up one and go into each and every row with one half double crochet so you should be having the same number of half double crochets as the number of rows that you have 
since we are going into each and every row with one half double crochet so since I have 10 um, rows I should be having a total of 10 stitches one two three four so this is my very last stitch so I have my 10 stitches there and now I'm going to start increasing on both sides like this this is the back panel remember so chain one turn your work place two half double crochets in this first space then one half double crochet in each of the next ones until you reach the last one where we shall also increase so here we are and uh, when you reach the very last stitch you will place a total of two half double crochets in it so two half double crochets in the last one so we increase in the first one and in the last one so we're going to row three chain one turn your work and row three is going to be the same as row two so two half double crochets in the first one and then one half double crochet in each of the next stitches until you reach the last one where we shall place a total of two half double crochets so this stitch really works up very very fast so you don't have to worry about the time you have to take to actually make this sweater so this is the very last stitch and I'll go in there with two half double crochets so you can see my work has started slanting towards the sides and so we want a total of five rows of increases so these are only two you're going to go ahead and do three more rows where you have to increase at the beginning and at the end and then after that we are going to stop increasing and we are going to do plain half double crochets all the way up to the length or yeah to the length of the sweater that you need so let me introduce my sweater it's not yet complete but I want to just give you a closer look of what to do so these are the front panels and this is the back panel this is the opening of the sweater so here we are I did my 40 rows and then increased and then went all the way up for a total of 25 rows that's what I wanted for mine because mine is cropped um, if you want something longer you can go ahead and make maybe 35 or even 40 rows if you want a longer sweater I want to give it a try too and so um, after this you're going to make the front panels these are the front panels you start the same exact way as we started the back panel the ribbing but this time you're going to do half the number of rows that you did for the back panel so if you had 40 rows for the back panel you will start with um, your chain of 10 and then back loop only single crochet for a total of 20 rows because 40 divided by 2 is 20 so um you do that then uh all right so now that we have our ribbing for the front panel we have a total of 20 rows and now we are going to go into each and every row with one um, half double crochet so you're going to chain up one and then go into the very first row with one half double crochet and over pull through all go into the next row with one half double crochet so you should have a total of 20 stitches or the number of rows that you did for your ribbing so go all the way across placing one half double crochet in each and every row until the end of the row and then i'll show you what to do next so i have my 20 um half double crochets and now we are going to start increasing on only one side just like we did for the body of the the back panel of the sweater 
This time we are going to be only increasing on one side because we don't want the increase in the middle of the sweater. So um, I'm going to be increasing on this side. So I'm going to chain one, turn my work. And in this very first stitch, I'll have a total of two half double crochets. One and then two. So that's the increase. And then go all the way across with one half double crochet in each and every stitch. So we're increasing by one stitch for every row and only on one side. So don't forget that. So we're going to go all the way across, placing one half double crochet in each and every stitch until the end of the row. And since we increased here, that means we are not going to be increasing at this point, at this end. So go in with one half double crochet until the end of the row. Okay, here we are, and I'm going to go into my very last stitch with one half double crochet. This is how your work will look like. So since this is my flat side, I'm going to chain one, turn my work, place one half double crochet in the very first stitch, and then go all the way across. And when we come to the end in the very last stitch, we shall place a total of two half double crochets to increase on that side. So there's a flat side and there's a side for increases. So we are going all the way across. And when you come to the end, this is our side for increasing. And when you come to the very last stitch, which is this one, you're going to place two half double crochets. So after your two half double crochets, we're going to um, the next row. We want a total of five rows of increases on only one side. So go all the way back and forth until you have a total of five rows of increasing on only one side and then I'll meet you when you're done with that. So after doing your five rows of um, increases on one side, this is how your work will look like up to this point. And now from there onwards, we won't be increasing anymore. We shall just be going straight with one half double crochet in each and every stitch for a total of 25 rows. We want the same number of rows as we did for the back panel. So if you had 25 on your back panel, you should have 25 rows on your front panel. And now we are going to do the same exact thing for a second uh, front panel because we need two of them. And then we're going to be attaching them to the back panel. So, um, I've already attached one of them and I'm going to be showing you how to attach this this panel onto the back panel so this is one of the front panels and this is the other front panel so place your front panel in a way that this side with the increase is on the edge of the sweater like this because we want them to do that curve it creates like a bomber look, like a bomber jacket or something, such a design. So you want this to face on the outside. So for this side, this first on this side, on the outside of the sweater. So um, you're going to grab your tapestry needle, attach it to this corner of the front panel. And you should notice that you have half the total number of the back panel stitches on one of the um, front panel. So I have a total of around 26 here, 26 stitches. And here I have a total of 52 stitches all the way across. So uh, we're going to be attaching our 
front panel to the back panel but keep in mind we want to create some space here we don't want to close it up like this because this will create a funny fitting so um you're going to put your hook your your tapestry needle through the thread and start aligning stitch by stitch so the back loop of this side to the front loop of the other side and then you join that's what I'm going to do back loop then the front loop all the way across until you have six stitches left on the front panel Go all the way across until you have six stitches left on the front panel. Um, so I have six stitches left. Let me show you. I have um, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Those are my six stitches. So now I'm going to um, be putting two stitches into one of the top stitch. So this is one of the stitches into this next stitch. And then also the next one into that same stitch and then go to the next into the next stitch and the next stitch of the front loop into the same stitch and then the next one into the next stitch and then the last stitch into that very same stitch so this just helps us pull the sweater towards the side so that we create some space for the neck area. So um, the next thing I'm going to do is just to go into this very last loop and make sure I pass it through a stitch so that it closes up this and it doesn't stay open. So um, that's how to join this effect that we've created here is the only reason why we have some spaces in here in between so um after this i'm going to remove my tapestry needle from here i'll weave these in later because i may need them for future use that's why i don't cut them just leave them hanging and now we're going to go to the side of our work grab your tapestry needle we're going to be seaming up the sides of the sweater and uh, this is going to entirely depend on how big your sleeves are so for me the sleeves were a total of 40 stitches all the way around and so um, I want to leave a total of 30 stitches upwards that means I leave 15 here and 15 here to make a total of 30 stitches then I'll find a suitable way to distribute them so I'm going to go to the base here and I first attach the ribbing So go all the way up until you have a total of 15 stitches left on both sides or whatever number you're comfortable with. You don't want to make a very big space for your sleeves and you don't want to make a very small space because um, the sweater will look weird. So I'm going to attach this until a certain point when I feel like um, the sleeves will be enough for me. OK, 
okay so now i'm on the body of the sweater i'll go into each and every row with just one stitch so attach each and every row so this is what i have it's almost invisible so whatever stitch you prefer to use that's really up to you i'm going to go all the way up and create the armhole of my sweater so for me this is enough and it measures about um about nine inches eight to nine inches of the armhole so that means it's around 16 inches because it's times two so after this i'm going to remove my tapestry needle and also leave this hanging because i'll need it when i'm attaching the sleeve around so let's get into uh, the sleeve and i show you how to make it so here is the sleeve um it has this texture which i really like so we're going to be working from down here upwards then i'll show you how to do this part and then i'll also show you how to do the wrist area then i'll show you how to attach so let's get started so you're going to start off with a slip knot and make a chain oh uh, that's the width of the sleeve that you want so i'm going to be making a chain of 50 and that chain should be a multiple of five so one two three four five six seven So I have my 50 chains and you're going to make sure your work is not twisted and you're going to go into this very first chain that you made. So if you want it bigger you can go up to 70 maybe 80 that's really up to you but 50 was okay for me. So after my slip stitch here in the very first chain I'm going to chain up four and this counts as a treble crochet I'm going to yarn over twice and go into that very chain yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two yarn over twice go into that very chain yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two so you have three loops on your hook yarn over twice insert your hook yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two those are four loops we want a total of um eight loops on our hook so we are going to continue doing that so these are five chain uh yarn over twice these are six yarn over twice insert your hook in that same chain these are seven yarn over twice insert your hook pull through yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two so we have a total of eight loops on our hook and once you hit eight loops you're going to yarn over and pull through all all those loops and you're going to chain up one so this one closes up this puff stitch and then you're going to chain up four one two three four and you're going to skip the next four chains so we've been working in this chain so we're going to skip over four chains and into the fifth you're going to go in there with a single crochet like that 
and then you're going to chain up four and prepare for another puff stitch so yarn over twice skip over four stitches one two three four and into the fifth you're going to insert your hook yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two so we are going to repeat that same exact thing that we did here we are going to keep yarning over twice inserting our hook yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two until we have a total of eight loops on our hook so we do that for a total of eight times the only difference is at the beginning we didn't do eight times we did seven times because we have a chain four that counts as a treble crochet so these are five loops on our hook six seven and eight so the moment you do eight times you'll notice that you have eight loops on your hook and once you get eight loops you're going to yarn over and pull through all and then chain one and that chain one i've told you closes up the puff stitch and then you chain four skip the next four stitches and into the fifth you're going to go in there with a single crochet so this is what we have right now I'm going to go all the way around doing that same exact thing so chain four prepare for a puff stitch so yarn over twice skip the next four chains and into the fifth you make a puff stitch So this is done, yarn over pull through all, chain one, and then chain up four. Skip the next four chains, one, two, three, four, and into the fifth, go in there with a single crochet, like that. So this is what we have, we are going to go all the way around and i'll meet you when i'm at this point so i've placed my single crochet here and you can notice that i have four stitches left four chains left and i'm going to chain up four and skip over the four chains and go on top of the very first puff stitch and slip stitch there so that marks the end of round one so um for round two things are going to change a bit um you can see that the the puff stitches keep alternating one in the middle of the other so this was row one and the next one settled in the middle of the gaps and the next one settled in the middle of these ones so that's what we are going to try to create so um, these points with the single crochets are now going to be the ones to bear the puff stitches and the puff stitches are going to get single crochets so chain up one so you're going to chain up one and single crochet in that same space in that same stitch so single crochet I've told you every top of every puff stitch will get a single crochet but every single crochet here will get a puff stitch so after your single crochet you're going to chain up four and prepare for a puff stitch and this time we are working it into this single crochet so I hope you remember how to do the puff stitch yarn over twice pull through two pull through two so we want a total of eight times 
in the same stitch we are doing um, eight treble crochets together so this is my very last one and I have eight loops on my hook yarn over pull through all and chain one so you can notice that we have uh, a puff stitch at this point now and it has come in between these two of the previous row so you're going to chain up four single crochet on top of the next puff stitch like that chain four create a puff stitch in the next single crochet So this is my last stitch like that yarn over pull through all chain one chain four and single crochet in the next on top of the next puff stitch make a single crochet and then chain four and create a puff stitch in this single crochet so go all the way around repeating that same exact thing until the beginning of the row so we are coming to the end of the row and you can see our very first single crochet was here so I've chained up my four and then I'm going to go into that very stitch with a slip stitch so you can notice that this time our slip stitch is at that point where we have to create the puff stitch I hope you can see that because um, our next row of puff stitches, the puff, the, the bubbles have to be placed in between these two um, puff stitches of the second row. So for the third row, since the puff stitch is going to be placed at this point, you're going to chain up four. And this counts as one of the treble crochets and create a puff stitch in that very stitch so for this one we shall do a total of seven times since the chain four counts as one of the trebles One more and now we have our eight loops on our hook yarn over pull through all chain one so if you if you're this person who loses track of the stitch counts or um, gets lost along the way you may kind of find it hard to know where the rope started from I use this string to know that my row ends in this line but if you can't keep track of that then i prefer you use a stitch marker and you always mark the very first point of every row so for this row it's at this point so if you have a stitch marker place it at this point then chain four single crochet on top of the next um, puff stitch chain four create a puff stitch in this single crochet so we just keep alternating the placement of the puff stitches so that uh, we create a good effect they they look like they are alternating every row
so this is what we have so the there are some rows that disappear in between there because this was row one row two is there the one with a single crochet and this is row three and we're going to go all the way around until you get the number of puff stitches that you want for the length i'll meet you guys back and i'll let you know how many i did okay so here we are i did a total of um let me see one of the lines has six balls and one has seven because they keep alternating so that's where i stopped and this measures about this measures about um twelve inches eleven to twelve inches in total so um the next thing that i'm going to do is to start working half double crochets because i want my stitches these bubble stitches to stop here so um i'm going to chain up one and then make one half double crochet in that very stitch and then make three half double crochets in this big space and then make one half double crochet in the single crochet and then three half double crochets in the big space so that's the repeat for this row um, when you get to this part you go into that stitch with one half double crochet and when you get to the spaces you place a total of three half double crochets and then when you get to this single crochet you place one half double crochet so go all the way around and uh, I'll meet you back when I'm at this point so I've placed my very last three half double crochets in this big space and I'm going to go into the very first half double crochet that I did with a slip stitch and after this I'm going to go all the way around with some more rounds of um, half double crochets so chain one half double crochet in that very stitch and go all the way around placing one half double crochet in each and every half double crochet below so i'm going to do that for a total of five rows and then i'll meet you back when i'm done um so after our five rounds this is how your work should look like We've done five rounds of plain half double crochets without any increases or decreases and now we're going to find the most suitable way to fit this sleeve onto the main body of the sweater so i'm going to just um, attach try to divide your stitches equally so that uh, you don't tighten this or loosen it so I'm going to go ahead and use my tapestry needle to do that. Uh, right now I'm running out of yarn, but I'm going to get some more yarn. So this is the wrong side of the sweater, meaning um, we have to also be on the wrong side of this sleeve. And this is our wrong side. So um i'm going to be distributing my stitches equally onto the sleeve so you're going to go all the way around attaching your sleeve to the main body of the sweater so you can see we are joining this part so i'm going to go all the way around and i'll let you see what has come out of that so after attaching our sleeve this is what we have and when you turn it to the right side you're going to have something like this 
So you can see um, the piece is totally attached to the body of the sweater. So um, right now we're going to do the ribbing part of the sleeve at the base. So right now we are going to be working on the wrist part of the sleeve and we want it to be a bit tighter than this. This is a bit big. So you're going to identify any stitch. I'll go into this one and make a slip stitch. So after attaching your yarn, you're going to chain up one and then you're going to go into that very stitch with a double crochet then double crochet in this big space here go into the next stitch with a double crochet double crochet in the next space go into the next stitch with a double crochet go into the next space with a double crochet so we are just placing one one double crochet at every point and in every space. This will help us gather the sleeve together. So let me go all the way around and I'll show you what I'll come up with. So I've gone all the way around and I'm back to the beginning of the round and I'll go into the very first double crochet that I made with a slip stitch. So you can see the size of the wrist has become very small compared to this width of the sleeve. So after this you're going to chain up two and then go into the next stitch with a front post double crochet so you go behind the post and push it forward so this is a front post double crochet and continue to front post double crochet in each and every stitch all the way around this will create a nice ribbing effect so the only difference is um, I'm working only front post I'm not doing back post so this is what it's creating on our sleeves so this is the part that's going to rest on the wrist so go all the way around with front post double crochet and continue to make as many rounds as you want for your um, end of the sleeve I guess I'll be doing around three to five I'll be letting you know in a bit so I did a total of five rows for the wrist and then I chained up one and now I'm going to cut my yarn that marks the end of this sleeve so you're going to go ahead and do the same exact thing that we did here onto the other side and um, let me show you how that looks like on this side this is how everything has come together so I'm going to mirror what I've done on this side onto this other side and then I'll be showing you how it has come out but other than that um, the only thing left is the ribbing on the edge so let's get started on that okay so now that we are done with the major parts of the sweater we are going to do the final edging which is going to run from here all the way up and then down to this part so just the front edging and I'm going to grab my yarn using the same exact hook and I'm going to start from this corner I'm going to attach my yarn and chain up two which doesn't count as a stitch so double crochet in that very stitch and continue to double crochet in each and every stitch 
for a total of nine stitches since we had a total of nine stitches on the ribbing so when you get your nine stitches here you're going to go into each and every row and you're going to place one double crochet so just find a suitable space to place your stitches evenly so that's what I'm going to do all the way up so it doesn't matter where you place your stitches just make sure you place them evenly so that you don't have the awkward look so go all the way up and when you get here you will place one double crochet in each of the stitches across and then you get to this side and then all the way down and I'll meet you at this point so I've come to the end of my row and this is what I have I've gone all the way up and then to this side now after this you chain up two and turn your work to the wrong side so row two is going to be on the wrong side and we are going to be doing front post double crochet back post double crochet so you go I'm going to first do a front post so go under the post pull up a loop double crochet and then for the next one I'm going to be going behind the loop and pushing it back so that's a back post double crochet and we are going to be alternating between these two stitches all the way up until the beginning of the row so front post back post front post and back post so do that all the way to the beginning of the row and I'll meet you when you have that you can see that effect that it's creating so go all the way to the beginning of the row which is here and I'll show you what to do next okay now we are done with the second row of the edging and for the third I'm going to chain up three and turn my work and every stitch that pops on the outside there are these stitches that are on the outside and then there are those ones that are down on the inside so every stitch that pops on the outside will get a front post double crochet and every stitch that's below will get a back post double crochet this is just to maintain the flow of the stitches and keep the ribbed effect so continue to do this until uh, the end of the row and this is going to be my very final row if you want more rows you can go ahead and do maybe five rows but this will be perfectly fine for me so let me go all the way around until the end of the row and I'll show you how my work will look like okay so this marks the end of uh, row three and this is how the ribbing looks like on the edge so this is basically it I'm going to chain up one and cut my yarn and then the next thing that I'm going to do is get rid of all the loose ends because there are so many some of them I got rid of them as I worked but most of them are still on the piece you can see them so um, I'll be showing you how to get rid of one and then you'll go ahead and get rid of all of them on the sweater so you're going to get your tapestry needle so let me say I'm getting rid of this strand you can see it's on the outside of the work it's on the outside part of the work I'm going to get my crochet hook and make sure I pull it onto the wrong side I'll put my hook through and pull this hook so that that strand can go on the wrong side of the work then I'll try to find it it was around here 
then I'll put my tapestry needle like this and go through a few stitches back and forth it's just a random act you don't have to be like very specific about the stitches that you uh, place your needle through but just make sure it's uh, random and it can't undo itself so you just go back and forth into random stitches and after that you're going to get a pair of scissors and cut so that's how I get rid of my um, loose strands I always get this question you can see it's very neat and it's not visible anywhere so you're going to do that for all these loose strands that are lying around the sweater and that's basically it i hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial thanks so much for watching i'll see you in my next video so um don't forget to subscribe to my channel and uh hit the notification bell so that you're the first to know when i post something so thank you so much bye